Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. October 28th, William Wilberforce. Wilberforce was a teen from a wealthy family at a time when, every year, English businessmen kidnapped 35 to 50,000 African people and sold them as property. After Wilberforce became a true Christian, he saw his purpose in life. He said, So enormous, so dreadful, so irremediable did the slave trade's wickedness appear that my own mind was completely made up for abolition. Let the consequences be what they would. I, from this time, determined that I would never rest until I had effected its abolition. Already a member of Parliament, on this date, in 1787, Wilberforce resolved to end human trafficking in Great Britain. For 18 years, he introduced anti-slavery motions in Parliament until a bill finally passed. But that's not all he did. He also organized the Society for the Suppression of Vice and worked with reformer Hannah Moore to provide children with regular education in reading, personal hygiene, and religion. He supported the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals and encouraged Christian missionaries to go to India. Men of conviction always choose to stand firm in their fight. Once Wilberforce heard the call of God, he threw his heart into the fight against slavery. 21, wealthy and charming, Wilberforce entered Parliament in 1780. But later he said, quote, The first years in Parliament I did nothing, nothing to any purpose. My own distinction was my darling object. But God did not abandon Wilberforce. William had become a follower of Jesus Christ. His close times with Jesus permeated his life, and he soon saw that his idleness in Parliament had to go. Two influential men who detested slavery, Thomas Clarkson and John Wesley, separately approached Wilberforce and encouraged him to use his position to put an end to the evil of human trafficking. From John Newton, a former slave trader and author of the famous hymn, Amazing Grace, Wilberforce learned the horrors of the capturing and transporting Africans for slavery. He and Clarkson worked together against slavery, but in 1787, when the British Parliament voted down the anti-slave trade bill, Wilberforce experienced a crushing defeat. Undaunted, that day the young politician recorded his resolve in his diary. He would see an end to the slave trade. Although small in stature, whenever he was given the opportunity, he spoke boldly. Several atrocities awakened England to the horrors of the slave trade. In the Zong case, for example, the crew forced several captured Africans, who were only considered cargo, over the side of the ship so the owners could benefit from insurance payments. Slavery remained legal in England, and the transatlantic slave trade made for good business for British shippers. These events consumed Wilberforce. He had to do something. He was committed to obeying scripture. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 17, learn to do good, seek justice, help the oppressed, defend the cause of the orphans, fight for the rights of widows. Wilberforce engaged in conversations with numerous like-minded people, and they determined nothing less than the full abolition of the slave trade. They demonstrated that this evil harmed all parties. Most brutal for Africans, it made for corrupt business leaders and appalling working conditions for sailors. If the people were not swayed by the plight of the Africans, perhaps they would be troubled by the dangers and moral degradation faced by their fellow Englishmen. The pro-slave traders tried to derail Wilberforce by telling the public how the Africans were far better off in captivity than in their natural state in Africa, a lie of tremendous proportions. Plenty of obstacles stood in Wilberforce's way, but he remained strong. Although the first bill had been defeated by a two to one margin, the new version carried more promise. Wilberforce and his partners successfully persuaded their counterparts. 
the Slave Trade Act of 1807 passed with overwhelming numbers. Is there an area where you have been idle and it's now time to step up and step out? Is God calling you to do something? Men of conviction always choose to stand firm in their fight. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.